Hello. People like taking photos. Technology companies generate a lot of advertising aimed at convincing you that you need to buy their latest product in order to get quality pictures. This is a great way to sell cameras. The only problem is it's not quite true. There's a device that can change how you take photographs and as an added bonus you'll be able to pick up almost any camera and start taking pictures. The name of the device is an incident light meter. There's tons of online content showing what an incident light meter is and how to use them. Dedicated light meters are a bit niche and therefore not cheap. You'll pay anything from around $100 up to $1,000 to get your hands on one. We built ours using some relatively cheap components, simple maths and some code we wrote. Our light meter can be used with modern digital cameras, but we're ignoring them for now and focusing on giving some old film cameras a new lease of life. We'll use a medium format Hasselblad 503CX and a 35mm Pentax Assi. Both of these cameras are classics and they're also really simple, just mechanics and chemistry. Neither of these cameras have a built-in light meter. In our soup to nuts tests, we'll take a few photos, get the film developed, scan the resulting images and then show them at the end of the video. But before that, some fundamentals. The word photography comes from Greek and roughly translates to writing with light. The amount of light you use is important. Too much light and you end up with a dazzled camera and a white frame. Too little light and you have an overly dark image. Getting a correct exposure means getting a Goldilocks amount of light to hit a digital sensor or a piece of film so it can produce an image. Some of the sophistication that is baked into modern computational photography tries to figure out how much light is actually falling on the thing that you're photographing. If you have the option of measuring the light falling onto that thing, everything suddenly gets a lot easier. This kind of measurement is called incident metering and is the key to back to basics photography. Enough of that, here it is in action. And that's it. The DIY meter gave the same reading as the Sakonic meter and all the photos we took came back from the lab correctly exposed. So in short, light meters are useful tools and a good way to avoid wasting precious film. If you want to make your own, we shared all the code and instructions on our GitHub page. As usual, this is a first attempt and could be vastly improved by community input. So feel free to share your expertise.